thank you. Thank you very much for inviting us here. Um, there's really, in my mind, nothing more pressing than to deal with uh, the subject matter that we are, that brings us here tonight. The history around this is convoluted and complex, and very few people have all of the pieces to the puzzle. None of us as lawyers, archaeologists, or laymen, or public alike have all of the answers. The history of it certainly predates July 2014 when it was announced by Energy Transfer. Uh, and then them arriving at Standing Rock to uh, discuss things with the Tribal Council, at which time the sitting Tribal uh, Historic Preservation Officer at the time, Washtewe Young, uh, the sitting Chairman, Chairman Archambeau, and uh, Tim Metz Sr. at that time spoke out and said, this is not Tribal Consultation. We welcome you when you return to start that full tribal consultation process. And we have uh, September 2015 when uh, the Corps sent out the letter, uh, September 3rd that many of you have seen. We have December 2015 when the EA was released. Uh, that EA had to be redone. It was so poorly done by Merchant. Um, Grant and Pape had to come in and redo that survey that those surveys were not complete. We know that today. And uh, we know that um, the camp started April 1st, 2016. There's more than one camp. We have what is happening today as we speak on the ground out there with real human beings who are putting their lives on the line to try and stand up for what they feel is right. The regulations that the Corps of Engineers, that uh, Mr. Stevens says that the Corps did their job. No, the Corps did not do their job. The Corps did a very poor job. The Corps, the, the, the Corps uh, Appendix C that they function under as a legal document is an illegal document. That document is one which the, the way that they, they get confused on this is, is uh, they don't have enough resources. And the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing. And the right hand is arguing with the left hand. And so we come to today with a, lot, a very large convoluted uh, entity that puts forth their final statement. And then we have individuals such as the gentleman sitting next to me claiming that the Corps did their job. We have those regulations under uh, Section 106, excuse me, yes, uh, Section 101, D6B, uh, which says that tribes have the sole right to identify th those properties of religious and cultural significance, yet we have uh, archaeologists that are not from any tribal group identifying them for us. And people wonder why we're upset. Um, we have a very convoluted process, a very convoluted set of circumstances that lead us to where we're at today. The tribal consultation process was never formally initiated on the part of the Corps of Engineers. The process in the timeline, we can argue back and forth all we want, but we know that now a judge, the judge's decision, which was heavily laden with, it was almost as though he didn't read any of the depositions on the tribal side, that he only read the deposition from the Corps of Engineers. And, you know, with, that process is backwards. You're supposed to start that tribal consultation at the beginning, not at the end. Not when the EA or the EIS is drafted do you start tribal consultation. Everyone involved knows that this is how it's supposed to work. 
The government agencies know it's supposed to work this way. The tribal entities know it's supposed to work this way. Yet we have a process that the Indian tribes are, that process of tribal consultation is not initiated until they are done or almost done with uh, the writing of that draft EA or draft EIS. So what triggers the NEPA process? In this instance, with this particular one, we first had the BLM, and we found out later even the BIA was involved, and nobody, nobody wants to talk about that. And we have uh, the Corps of Engineers, we have the US uh, Fish and Wildlife Service that jumped on towards the end. We have the US, uh, uh, we have the several agencies that have been in this process, and oh, well, who's gonna take the lead? Well, there has to be some changes that are made at the congressional level so that tribes okay, have a fair, and if we have to negotiate on, in a fair and good way, in that fair, good faith effort, so do all other entities. That, that governance process, the, the, the SHPO offices, are, the State Historic Preservation Offices and the Tribal Historic Preservation Offices are supposed to be on the same level. Yet, in this instance, we have state laws and the state um, PSC, Public Service Commission, and the state SHPO uh, signing off on something and giving concurrence to something uh, without having any involvement from the tribe. And you tell me, when the Bismarck City Commission tells you, DAPL, that no, we don't want it above our city because we are concerned about water quality, how is it then that our water quality, for those of us, is less than? This is one of the best instances of institutional racism that you will see currently going on and we're not getting much, we're not getting the attention that we need. And, you know, how is it that this, that this, uh, the, tr the, the state uh, trumps the federal? Uh, it, it's, it's, you know, the surveys were inc incomplete. The, there's, there's cumulative effect, uh, impact to indirect and direct to uh, these sacred sites that they have blown through in every state. Every state has had burials blown through. This is a, 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 a very bad mark on U.S. tribal relations this is quite historic. What's going on on the ground out there is quite different than what's going on legally. That's quite different that's going on within the tribal governments. Uh, the fact remains that the reserved water rights of the Ocheti Shakawi are being violated. The water quality is being violated. Uh, and we must agree that we should not have gone through this so quickly. Why is it that our peoples are expendable? Why is it that our water quality, that our sacred sites, that our water rights are more expendable than the general population? Thank you, Dr. Morgan.